All right, Twitch, Saturday, 12 Central Standard Time. That means it is time for some in-studio painting. And I actually have been painting for just a little bit, just trying to catch up some items. Of course, this is the last, um, not the last, but next week we are not going to be doing live in the studio painting because of ReaperCon. So we'll probably do some live streams at ReaperCon. Uh, I don't know exactly what time we will be doing those streams just because I will be doing some teaching each day of ReaperCon. So it's hard to say exactly if we'll be able to follow the schedule, but any updates I will post in preparation for that. So today on the stream, just touching up a little bit of stuff that's on the workbench, try to get it cleared out a little bit. Here I'm doing just a number of rats. Uh, these are just some speed painted rats, giant rats for tabletop use. We've got them painted up, but I have got to do just some last dry brushing on the rats on their bases so that when they hit the table, they look good and ready to go. So just some dry brushing, nothing too fancy. Again, this is just speed painting for the tabletop use. These are Reaper miniatures, giant rats. Now you can also see on the table I have some giant spiders. Those are also Reaper miniature giant spiders. We got those all painted and done. So after this bit of dry brushing, the giant rats and giant spiders will get their seal coat. And then in 24 hours, they will be complete, sealed up and everything. So these giant rats are pretty cool. I actually really dig them. Um, I haven't had giant rats to actually use on the table as far as miniatures go. I've always used just placeholders. Um, I usually use dice, just six-sided dice. That way I can number the giant rats. When I was getting ready to paint these, I thought about painting their bases different colors so that you could call out when I move towards blue, I'm going to move towards green. But... I decided rather than that, I wanted to go ahead and just paint them because the game tables that I'm generally playing at are not so big that people can't just motion where they want their miniatures to go or anything like that. So pretty easy to manage and maintain without having color-coded bases should be pretty good. And four to go. And we will move back to some heroic figures. And start working on those. I'm not going to stream a whole long time today just because I have got my diorama to finish and that is going to require me doing some sealing which I can't do in the studio at this point in time so I've got to go outside for that and I want to get that done so I don't even know if we're going to go a full hour today. We may just go half an hour. I don't know. We'll see how it goes based on the miniatures that we're working on. And you can
can see here, oh, it went a little heavy on that one. That's all right. Again, these are just for tabletops, so I'm not looking for perfection on these. So for these bases, these are actually sculpted into the miniature. They are like a cobblestone base. Um, because I used browns on the rats, I went with blacks and grays for the cobblestones. And if this were for anything other than tabletop use, I'd probably work in some different colors. Some tan cobblestones and some reddish color in there. And make it look a little bit more like some sandstone material just for variation and differentiation. But I decided to go just with grays. Again, because these are just for tabletop use, quick play, low level encounters, and then just some more set dressing than anything else or anything anything else I should say um, but just using a flat brush to try brush those out and then clean it up now the giant spiders are all done. Um, those were also just done in browns. So I used the same colors on the spiders as the giant rats. So these giant spiders just did in browns so that I can use them as needed at the game table. Again, these are generally when I'm doing RPGs, a lot of creatures like this. I just use dice in place of the giant spiders and lots of creatures like that just because generally I have quite a few um, combatants on the map and I've never really utilized uh, buying multiple miniatures for a creature type like that. Uh, but I'm doing it more and more just because I think it lend some good validity to having miniatures on the table that you can have multiple uh, renditions of. I'm going to have to uh, actually grab something to put them on so that I can take them out to seal. We'll move our dragon turtle for the moment and just get these bad boys on a case here so that they can be sealed and good to go. All those spiders and rats, good stuff for low level adventures. And again for set dressing for any higher tier games. Alrighty, so let's see what we got. What do we have here? Right, fix my brushes up a little bit until I have uh, have not been doing a great job of uh, keeping my workstation clean. So I've got um, some tabaxi. These were part of Bones 5 and I've never been big on tabaxi myself but I have had players who have used tabaxi as player characters and so I figured you know what I've got one of these this one here that the base you can see is painted purple uh, that is for differentiation at the table so one of my players in one of my current campaigns uh, is playing a tabaxi. So I thought what better way than having a tabaxi miniature paint session. So my goal is to today paint some tabaxi. And again I've never 
I've never done tabaxi before, so I don't know how this is going to turn out. Um, I really, really don't. I've got a couple of ideas. Um, I thought about utilizing, uh, let's see, where's one of my, yeah, wood stain broom. Um, my own cats for inspiration. And so I'm going to paint these a couple of different colors of tabaxi, but I'm really only going to stick to two just because I don't know how it's going to go. I've never utilized this technique before. And I'm just really shooting from the hip here. So you can see I did a little bit of coloring on this one here with some paint. Um, I wanted to just get some paint down and start seeing how it, how the figure looked. And so I'm just going to go over that with my orange. And that is Carrot Top Red. Because I want to have... An orange tabby style cat. So that is my inspiration. That's what I'm going after. I don't know if I'm going to do it justice or not. But I figured we're going to have three orange cats and two gray cats. So you are coming with me on an adventure on this one just because I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't, I just, I'm not sure because I have not done this before. We'll see together as we're doing. So my goal is to cover these miniatures with this carrot top orange. And I'm going to give them a wash with the wood stain brown to give good deep shadows in there and then come back through and start putting in some striping on the tabaxi with a couple of different shades of orange. We will see if that gets the desired effect. I'm going to do the same thing with the other tabaxi but with grays. So we will see. And I'm just not sure how this is going to turn out. First attempt at painting tabaxi characters. And for some inspiration, I like I said, I was going to draw it off my cats, but um, they're all kind of like, well, for the most part, two of them are like really speckled. Uh, mostly white, but very speckled. I thought about doing that on one. You know, I actually may do that on one of them just for some further differentiation. I'll use my own cat for some inspiration. And I'm overpainting here just because I want a good base coat for the fur. I don't want to miss anything as I start painting the armor and clothing. So one of these others is going to be white. I'm going to keep the, the mage tabaxi. We're going to do that one. Modeled after one of my cats. That cat's name is Willow, and uh, she is a rescue. She actually was a very young kitten, and we had a stray cat that was moving around the neighborhood that we, uh, we were friendly to and made sure it always had some food and water, and it spent a lot of time on our back porch. and. Uh, one day, it was a male cat. Uh, one day, he brought over a friend, which was just this 
couldn't have been more than a couple week old kitten and scrawny dirty just a the perfect cat for what you would think for a stray if you were to do an ad or anything she fit the bill just skin and bones and not much to her at all so um, she was definitely super sick recovered so we brought her in quarantined her got her all fed up and I got her on some antibiotics got her flea treatments which had to wait of course until she was a little bit older and healthy for her to be able to get them um, so we had to start her out really light and slow and then move into more aggressive treatments once she started gaining some weight and getting healthier. So um, at that time we were like, once we get her healthy, then we'll just open the door and let her go out into that big, beautiful world. And not so much, <laughs> not so much at all. So she is still with us after, I think three years we've had her thereabouts, maybe four, I don't know. It's been a bit, that's for sure. So we'll use her for some inspiration. And we will do this wizard cat. I've got some, this is skeleton bone white. I'll show the bottle here in just a minute because I will need to add some more. This is skeleton bone white. We'll just add that. couple more drops and this one I'll wash with a khaki highlight and then start highlighting with skeleton bone white again and into probably dragon white and we'll put on some colorations in the grays and probably a uh, little bits black Then we'll have three colors of tabaxi. Orange, gray, and white. So pretty good representation. <clears throat> I've built a lot of characters that are tabaxi just because I want to see how they work, how they function. Um, I have never played them as a player character, but I did have them feature heavy in a campaign that I ran uh, a couple of years ago. But I modeled them more after big cats, so jaguars, pumas. Cheetahs and tigers. So quite a bit of difference from how I'm going to be painting these. But because these are PC characters, I wanted something that the players who receive these actually can like relate to a little bit and uh, hopefully get some good inspiration from. So again, overpainting from the fur aspect, but having painted that Rask Carefolk recently from Christina Van Patten, it made me feel a little bit more confident to paint these tabaxi. Because initially I was not going to paint them at all and just in games that I hosted use these as giveaways um, in my campaign games 
uh, not one shots but in my campaign games all of my players I want to paint them a miniature and if they use it in game that's great if they bring their own they get to keep the miniature and hopefully like it well enough to pop it somewhere for display put it on a shelf just for memories whatever the case may be it's their miniature to do with as they please but one of the uh, fun aspects that I like about being a GM who also loves to do professional miniature painting We'll do some gray cats. Very, very, <clears throat> very, very different from what I have done in the past. So I am definitely pushing myself in many aspects. I'm trying to do a lot more bright colors this year on miniatures. Um, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of that. Um, more and more. I'm actually going to be painting a couple of Sun Elves as well, soon-ish. Probably once I finish these Tabaxi. I believe I've got two or three more Sun Elves to paint. I've actually really enjoyed those. Uh, the next one, I was thinking about it for Sun Elves. I was going to do primarily blues and yellows just because of like daytime sky thought processes. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, with Sun, you really can do lots of other colors oranges for sunrises and sunsets, pinks in the clouds, white, um, all different kinds of things. Any color of flowers. So I decided on the next sun elf that I do, I am going to really push myself to have uber vibrant whites and purples and reds and blues. So I am really going to challenge myself to step out of my shell and have some very vibrant colors to it. And then they're all dressed very similar. They've got a, uh, a heavy like hooded cloak. The hoods, some of them are up, some of them are down. Um, the majority of them actually are up, uh, with um, a few of them with the hood down. But then they've got almost like this cape aspect built in as well on the cloaks. So. There have been some aspects where I want to do a lot more freehand on their cloaks as well. So I'm going to try to do that in the next one that I do. All right, one more that'll do gray. For the gray, I'm going to do a black wash. drive in some shadows into that fur and then beginning begin putting in some striping of black and white so this 
this one, I feel, is the Barbarian and is not going to be wearing much armor. So we'll get this one here will have a lot of tone. Maybe I should have done this one in the orange. cats is gray. Hilo is his name and he has like thick, long thick fur. Which I'm a fan of. I found with uh, our youngest daughter, she actually has a pet allergy for the dander, but it's only on fine haired animals. So short-haired animals set her allergies off or used to set her allergies off. She is all grown up now and living on her own. So I don't know if she still has those allergies or not. Um, it's just something we don't talk about much, but I imagine that she still has those allergies. not presume that she doesn't. But it's hard to say because people can grow out of their allergies. So hard to say. This gray is actually a little bit hard to see because I just did a black base coat on these miniatures. I didn't do a Xenophil. Probably should have. But again, these are just some tabletop minis, so I'm not uh, not pulling out all the stops on them like I would with a competition mini. much coverage as possible on this first coat. A couple of little bits that I'm not sure if it's fur or what. So I'm going to overpaint a little bit more up high could be fur. And then as we start diving in and working on the detail, we'll have a better idea. And this one is shadowed stone that I'm using. for the base gray. And 
I don't know again how much we're going to get painted on screen today, but if you follow my Instagram, you will be able to see the final product when they are fully painted and sealed and based and ready to go. So if you're looking for my Instagram, I don't know off the top of my head what it is. I believe I've got it posted to my page. So if you need it, you can find it there. All righty, there is our undercoating. Now let's go back through here. Just looking to make sure they're dry. Thin down, do a wash of my wood stain brown, and just slather that on the orange elements. It's going to drive in some shadows. Now, depending on the contrast you want to do, you can do black, just straight black. I believe for this orange, the brown will set it up much better for highlighting up with oranges. So brown is the direction I want to go. And just slather that wash on. It's going to take it some time to dry. Miniatures take time. You could use the same brown <clears throat> for our white cat. The problem is we're going to be layering in grays and blacks. So if we have it with just whites, grays, and blacks, it's going to look very monochromatic which I want to avoid on that one. So I'm going to be using that khaki highlight to give it a brown tone, but without having it be too dark. Because going from the wash into your first touch up on that base coat color, I don't want too harsh of a contrast. I want a smoother blending between those shadowed areas. And because we're not doing a uh, competition level painting, it's just got to be good enough for my table to have a good quality paint job that has detail differentiates it on the table. It looks good. As you can see with this khaki highlight, it's really hard to see any variation from it to the skeleton white. And that's what I want. I don't want these shadows to be super contrasty. I want it to be super dark. I want this one to be very light. So this is going to give it an undertone that's a little more fleshy or organic without looking dirty. If we went with just the brown on this one, it would look more scruffy and dirty. And I don't want that. This is... <coughs> 
excuse me, this is my wizard, <clears throat> and I want him to look kind of prim and proper. Competition-wise, I would go through and do probably a blend of that khaki highlight <clears throat> and earth brown to have one more deep shade that I would go through and put like under the chin, um, underneath the arms, in the crooks of the legs, bottom of the tail. So you can differentiate your washes as well, your blends of washes, so that you can layer up uh, multi-tonal shading via washes. When you get into your competition aspect, you definitely want to do that just to drive more contrast, add in more colors, um, really show the attention to detail, um, playing off of light and shadow. Uh, that, that earns you a lot of points. So if you do that as part of your, almost like an underwash, um, it works really, really well for earning some good points. And just a black wash onto the fur. And this is going to be harder to see on this because we've got it just black base coated. But when we go to work in our first highlights, it'll make a big difference. The new rules aspect for D and 1 D and D have been released. I don't know if anybody had been uh, keeping up with any of that. I have all the playtest materials. I am currently doing some of my own playtesting on it before I bring it into the group setting. Um, but it looks like for my campaign world, the sixth age is getting close to start. So in some ways I'm kind of excited for it. Um, I've been playing in the fifth age with fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons now since it came out. And a lot of my game world, I've got established lore and, uh, you know, of course when you're running long-term campaigns, you build up a lot of aspects of your game world so it's going to be nice to be able to change those up and uh, kind of start fresh. If you've watched any of my shows, my game world is called Earth. And I have been using the same game world since 1990. And each edition that I play is a different age. So I steal from Thundar the Barbarian. And every time there is a new age, basically a body in space comes by the planet too close and just destroys everything, tears it all up, changes up all aspects of the game world. That way I can start my game world kind of fresh for each campaign. The differences from campaign to campaign are explained because it's all a new age. Um, and when I play any of the uh, like prior editions, I'm able to not even utilize any of the stuff that the players have been using in current ages. So I can bring them right back to the Beck Me or first edition. And um, it's a completely different world, completely different uh, aspects of the continents that they're on. Um, some of the continents even have little bits of variations. So it allows me a lot of freedom to be able to do some uh, really cool aspects of gaming. I know these washes are going to take a while to dry. So I think I am going to go ahead and start working on my ceiling. So we're probably going to end the show a little early. Um, see, prior to start, I was hoping to get a little bit further, but prior to start, I started working on some of the terrain for my gargantuan spider, which I just received. 
recently. Look at that bad boy. Look at him compared to the PCs. Just amazing. And I have not started painting this one yet. I just did the base coat in pure black. But I want to get the base done and sealed so that as I start painting on that, I can do the underside first and then mount it to the base so that I've got a better aspect to hold it because trying to paint and maneuver the uh, that massive spider around, I don't want to rub paint off. So um, working on painting and doing the basing aspects of this are going to be first. Now you can see there are lots of details, some skull and bone fragments. Um, there are little bits of like hidden treasure. There's looks almost like a rod or something. I suppose it could be a bone as well. Um, but lots of little detail elements that I want to paint. And then I'm going to put on some flocking and some various aspects like that. And to get this completely done, paint the underside of the spider so that I can have it just easily manipulated and uh, not rub off the top. And I mount it to the base, put it on a plinth at that point, and then paint the top of the spider. So uh, lots of elements to do on that as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and seal up all of my giant rats and giant spiders so that I can get those on my completed shelf and then come back to do some more painting on the many other miniatures that I need to do in preparation for ReaperCon, as well as my own table and just displays and competitions. So if you join me here today on Twitch, thank you. I hope it was uh, enjoyable, insightful, and relaxing a little bit. Until next week when we're going to be broadcasting live from ReaperCon. Have a fantastic week. Enjoy the weekend. And of course, don't hesitate to let us know via comments and your support. Where will your adventures take you? Bye-bye.